Alright then gang, so in this video what I'd like to do is create the percent bars to show the percentage of votes. For example, 20 over here would probably show a percent bar of just over half and this one on 14 just under half over here. And over here each one would be halfway because they both have four votes. So we're going to create those in this video and to do that we need to go to our poll details component. So these things right here, the percent bars, these are the things that are going to show those progress bars, kind of. So what I'm going to do is style these first of all, and then we'll use dynamic values to decide how long or how wide these should be, the width of them. So let's just create a selector for the percent div first of all and style them both with some generic styles. So down here I'm going to say dot percent, and then inside that I'm going to say the height is 100%, so the height of the parent, so that's just the answer itself, and we can see that the height is like this height of the grey bar. So the height is 100% of that, and we also want to say the position is absolute, so it's going to start at the top left, 0 and 0, and then we're going to say the box sizing is border hyphen box. Okay, so if I save this now and go over here, then we're not really going to see anything different because it doesn't have a background color. Um, it's, there's nothing visible about it. We're just setting a dimension height of 100%, position absolute and box size in border box, but it doesn't have a width and it doesn't have a background color yet. Now I want to style percent %A and percent %B differently so they have different background colors. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say percent hyphen %A and that is going to have a background and this is going to be an RGBA color and I'm going to copy this from my repo so I don't have to type it out from scratch and it's kind of like a ready color. So now let's do percent %B, percent hyphen %B and we can say the background is going to be a different color which I'm going to copy again from my repo, paste it in there and this is more of a greeny color. So if I save this, again, we probably won't see anything on here because at the minute they don't have a width. They have a height, but not a width. So say, for example, I say the width of this should be 25% and the width of this one down here should be 75% or something like that. Oops, have to actually type out width first of all. That would be helpful. Okay, width 75%. We can now see that this bar is 75% of the width and this is just 25% of the width. Now we want the width to be proportional to the amount of votes. So we need to work out a percentage of the vote share that each option has and base the width dynamically on that. And we've seen how we can create kind of reactive or computive values using reactive values. So what we could do is calculate a running percentage of a particular option and it will recalculate every time the vote share changes. So let's do that first of all. I'm going to take away these widths right here because we don't really need those. And then up at the top, I'm going to create two more reactive values. And these are basically going to be the percentages, the percentage values for A and B. So let me create the first one, which is going to be percent %A. And I'm going to set that equal to math.floor, first of all, so that we don't end up with a float and it's going to be an integer. And then I'm going to take 100 for 100%. This is just a percentage calculation, nothing programming about this, just maths. And we divide that by the total of votes. I remember the total votes is worked out here. And then we times it by the number of votes of option A. So we have access to the poll, remember, which we accept as a prop. And we can say dot votes A. Okay, so that's going to give us the percentage of votes that A has. Now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to change this to B and also this to B and that calculates us now the percentage of votes that B has. So we essentially have the width of each bar now in a percentage. If this is 34 then this is going to be 66 and vice versa. So how do we dynamically output these percentages as widths? Well, pretty simply, we could come down here to the percent bars and we could output a style property onto this. And that style property is going to say that the width is going to be, and then we'll output a dynamic value, so curly braces, and we want percent %A, and then after the dynamic value, percent. So we're dynamically styling it based on this value. The width property is this 
value percent. All right. So let's copy that dude and paste it now down here. And this time we want percent B. Save that and preview. And now we can see we dynamically get those widths. And if I start to vote, then you'll notice the width of those bars change because the percentage is being recalculated every time we vote because it's based on the votes A, votes B, and the total votes. So we're watching those properties right there or those values and updating percent A and percent B every time those change. And therefore, the width of each bar is going to change to reflect that as well. So that's all working then, but I do want to do one more thing, and that's just to give each one of these little things a border, so a darker red for this over on the left, and a darker green for this over on the right. And that's because when you add a new poll, like so, there's no colors to begin with because neither one of these have been voted on yet. So I want to add a little red border on the left and a little green border on the left of the bottom one. So I can do this by coming down here and on percent %A, I'm going to paste this in a border left of four pixels solid and this red color and percent B again I'm going to copy and paste from my repo is going to be a border left of four pixels solid and this green color save it and refresh and now we can see each have their own little border on the left as well if we add a new poll add it and we can see those borders right there and if we start to click on these everything's all working so that is most of the functionality of this project complete now, in the next video, what I'd like to do is show you a different way of storing data because at the minute, we are storing all of the data inside app.svelte up here. And when we want to change data, we're emitting custom events up through the tree and then passing data back down through the tree. And it all becomes a little fiddly as it gets a bit more complex. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about data stores, which allows us to store data in a centralized location. And it makes state management a little bit easier.